Coming up, an angry President Biden pushes back at a special counsel's report that questioned his memory and handling of classified material. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A long-awaited Justice Department report on the investigation into President Biden's handling of highly classified documents from his time as vice president and senator has been released. It contains no charges against the president, but says Mr. Biden disclosed classified materials when he was a private citizen. CBS's Natalie Brand reports from Washington. After a year-long investigation, the special counsel report concludes that no criminal charges are warranted against President Biden for his handling of classified documents after he left the White House as vice president. The president addressed the report in televised remarks Thursday night. I was pleased to see he reached a firm conclusion that no charges should be brought against me in this case. This was an exhaustive investigation. But the report from special counsel Robert Hur issued harsh criticism, saying Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials when he was a private citizen. So these assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. The report included photos of classified Afghanistan documents at Biden's Delaware home and other records at his former office in Washington, D.C., her writes that Biden's conduct presented serious risks to national security given the vulnerability of extraordinarily sensitive information, but it concludes that the evidence does not establish Mr. Biden's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The finding comes as a time the president's chief political rival, former President Donald Trump, faces a criminal indictment accusing him of illegally keeping classified records at his Florida estate. Former President Trump, I don't believe, would have faced criminal charges if he had said... I found documents. Legal analysts say a key difference between the cases, Biden cooperated with the investigation. Her interviewed Biden for five hours and noted memory lapses concerning the timeline of when he was vice president and regarding a deep personal loss for the president. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? President Biden disputed issues with his memory when pressed by reporters. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. And at the end of the news conference, the president made a gaffe when referring to Egypt's president as the president of Mexico. Well, we are tracking a few showers across the mountains as we close out your Thursday and more rain chances on the way by Friday. Also the weekend, let's take a live look at first alert pinpoint Doppler zooming into a few showers close to I-64, also close to the Mountain Parkway for Stanton, also Slade and Powell County pushing into Menifee County, also for Rowan County close to Moorhead at this hour as well. And a few more showers in the Cumberland Valley from Somerset into London for Laurel County, pushing into Rock Castle County and portions of Whitley and McCreary County at this hour as well. Nothing too heavy, but a few sprinkles are possible as we go into this evening. Those current temperatures still mild. Most of us in the middle to lower 50s, up to 56 in Pikeville, 55 in Jackson, 52 over in London. At this hour, low temperatures are mild in the upper 40s as you wake up on Friday. Again, watching out for a few passing showers, but nothing too heavy as you wake up on Friday. But those rain chances are not over yet. We stay soggy at times on Friday, and those temperatures top out in the upper 50s and lower 60s, and more rain chances on the way for this weekend. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Cameron, thank you. A nationally recognized program steering criminal defendants to drug treatment instead of prison stands to lose all of its funding, and the decision by legislators to do so came as a complete shock to those who run it. Grayson Passmore tells us why the Kentucky Department of Public Advocacy plans to take their fight to Senate chambers. The goal of the criminal justice system is to keep our communities safe and to address the needs of the people before the court so that tomorrow is better than yesterday. Kentucky Public Advocate Damon Preston's office employs 53 social workers through the nationally recognized Alternative Sentencing Worker Program. They identify people who suffer from substance abuse and or mental health disorders and work with judges and prosecutors to provide rehabilitation. 
instead of costly incarceration. It's typically a $6 million budget item and a program that Preston says has only ever been praised. So it came as a complete shock when he learned a late amendment added to House Bill 6 last week said no funds would be allocated to the program. The votes had already been cast in the committee before I was able to see that this was really there. And then it was voted in the House the next day. So there had been no conversations with anyone about this at all beforehand. Program supervisor Don Gasser says thousands of people were given probation and treatment rather than prison time just last year. If the ASW program did not exist, um, I feel that a lot of our clients would just return to the jail. So that would be um, produce overcrowding. Um, they wouldn't be ha they wouldn't have the tools um, when they got out of jail to be able to um, equip themselves, and we would have a higher overdose rate. Now Preston will fight to have the clause removed as the bill heads to the Senate chambers. Tomorrow will be just like yesterday because our clients will not get the help that they need. In Frankfurt, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Representative Patrick Flannery is the chairman of the Budget Subcommittee on Judicial Issues. We have reached out to the representative for comment on the decision to include the amendment. We have not heard back. Under a new Kentucky bill, teens charged with serious felonies could be prosecuted harsher as adults in circuit court. Senate Bill 20 was approved today by a Senate committee. It looks to increase punishments and lengthens the amount of time some offenders would have to serve before getting parole. It also says children 15 and under charged with a felony involving a gun would be tried as an adult. The bill would reverse the criminal justice reform that Kentucky adopted three years ago. A bill that supporters say is designed to prevent divisive concepts being pushed on public college students and faculty passed in the Senate Education Committee today. The sponsor of Senate Bill 6 says the aim is to prevent faculty and students from being forced to endorse beliefs contrary to their own. The committee heard from University of, uh, University of Kentucky student who says she was denied a resident advisor job and discriminated against because of her conservative views. Opponents of the bill say the bill's language is confusing and if passed it will lead to more discrimination. The bill now goes to the full Senate. The search for Kentucky's next education commissioner continues. Five people have applied for the job. Dr. Jason Glass left the position last year after a political pushback. The board is weighing input from lawmakers, educators, and families. The deadline for candidates to apply is next Friday. One bill is aiming to extend an existing resolution allowing off-road vehicles to operate on highways. Senate Bill 125 passed the Senate and now heads to the House. It is looking to change the deadline for local governments to create pilot programs for the usage of ATVs and other off-highway vehicles from July 1, 2024 to July 1, 2027. Senator Johnny Turner says folks will still have to make sure their vehicle follows certain regulations by the state. Some property in Jackson County is now a build-ready site approved by state officials. The property sits at the Industrial Park in Jackson County. Officials say it has more than 17 acres qualifying for a 140,000 square foot building pad. Judge Executive Shane Gabbard says state officials have been helpful in getting the site approved. We have worked closely with the Cabinet of Economic Development and with uh, Governor Messieurs and Advisor Atkins, Rocky Atkins as well. Actually, uh, uh, Mr. Atkins sat in a meeting with myself and the leaders of economic development on this piece of property. Gabber says they do not have a company ready to build on the property, but he says the certification makes it more attractive for site selectors. One county is getting a financial boost to help with its search for more than 1,500 acres of land. Governor Andy Bashir announced this morning that Knox County received approval for a $250,000 grant to conduct due diligence as county leaders look to build a new industrial park. In addition to the grant, the Knox County Physical Court is expected to contribute an additional $6,800 for the project. Several local leaders shared their reaction to the grant announcement. Knox County Judge Executive Mike Mitchell says the industrial park will have a quote, generational impact on Knox and surrounding counties. 
Executive Director of the Southern Kentucky Economic Development Agency, Bruce Carpenter, said an additional industrial park is needed to recruit new industry and bring good paying jobs to the community. Corbin's Cumberland Comprehensive Care Center, Prestonsburg's Mountain Comprehensive Care Center, and Ashland's Pathways will receive a portion of approximately $6 million in grant funding to address neonatal abstinence syndrome. The three Eastern Kentucky organizations were among 17 recipients. The funding will be used to expand treatment and recovery services for pregnant and parenting women struggling with addiction. A structural collapse earlier this week in Knott County left one man trapped under the rubble. The Heinemann Volunteer Fire Department responded to the scene and using several pieces of equipment, the firefighters were able to lift and relieve the weight of the roof to save the man. Something Fire Chief Preston Hayes says would not have been possible without donors and state support. Actually, some of the tools that we use to make this response, uh, a lot of it is purchased just through fundraising. Uh, the equipment that we use was pretty much all fire commission funded this time around. Uh, our extrication unit, our jaws of life was uh, received on a grant. We actually used two set and the previous set was used, uh, purchased with state aid funds that's also provided uh, by the fire commission each year. An official with Perry County EMS says the man rescued was flown to a hospital. His name and condition is not known. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, folks in one community get a chance to make sure kids are getting a safe ride. We'll explain. And we are tracking some stray showers this evening and more rain chances on the way for the weekend. Your Friday forecast after this break.